Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and this is part five of the Walking Robot series. In this video, we're going to be talking types of joints. Okay, so with various types of joints used in robots, there are five major categories of joints. So the first one we're going to look at is the linear joint. The linear joint allows extension and contraction within the length of the arm of your robot, or in our case, leg. If you were so inclined, you could use that in both the thigh and the tibia of our leg to make the robot taller or shorter as required. Handy if you're trying to reach tall objects and handy if you need to shrink down shorter to walk through a low doorway. Uh, in this prototype that I'm working on, we will most likely not use that. Orthogonal joints is another type and in this case, uh, our arm slides along the length of an arm, uh, sticking out sideways. You could almost say that the X carriage on our 3D printers, if you're using the i3 style, works in this method. Uh, not something that we're likely to use on our legs, so we'll ignore that one for now. Revolving joints. Now the arm sticks out 90 degrees typically to the uh, base arm or the base of the robot and they rotate around that axis. So here I have a robot arm. This is one that I'm constructing. I haven't finished yet. Some leads the motors. But you could define the base joint as a revolving joint. Twisting joints, which this hasn't got, allows for the rotation of one shaft around the other one along its uh, length. We will probably use a pair of those on the hip and the ankle joint, so we'll actually separate the X and Y axis of the ankle and then do the Z as a rotation of the tibia. You can, uh, in some cases, combine different joint types. So you could combine the twisting joint with the linear joint as well. Uh, in this case, we're not going to do that, but we will probably use the twisting joint for the Z axis. Now, the last major category of joint that we'll be looking at is the rotational joint. So, if we look at this arm, this joint here is a rotational type of joint. Maybe if I hold it that way, it would be better. So, the, the main arm comes out here, and then this one will rotate around its axis. And this is pretty common and used. I've noted that both Gale's design for the knee and even uh, Bart's design for his knee, his attempt are of this rotational type, um, which is very common. You put your pivot in this point and it overlaps. This is forked and both forked through here, so it gives more strength. Both uh, Gale and Bart did the same thing and you'll find it very common in most joints. Now during my research on joints, and I'll put a link to some of this in the description, the channel Scientific actually showed a, a joint that he saw on another video, and I'll link that one as well, used in an elbow. And this is it. This is actually a very early prototype of the foot. And you can see here that it rolls around, in this case held by tendons. I've only got for holding it, I've actually fed in a couple of lines that I haven't finished testing with. Uh, the idea is that 
we can actually pull it quite well. I've still got to do the pulleys to go in here. And the design needs a lot of modeling for anchoring of the tendons. But the general concept, principal concept of this joint is actually very good. Now in the case of the foot, uh, we needed it about 70 degrees of freedom. We're, we were looking at 10 degrees down and 60 degrees up. Uh, with this particular type of hinge, rotational joint, we get closer to 135 degrees, which well exceeds the required 70. So I will be investigating that one a little bit further uh, with the view to making it a tendon base. I will go more into actuation of joints in another video uh, and we'll also go into balance and the torque required to move an active joint is another thing that we will need to talk about as it influences design decisions on how these work. But for now, yeah, work progresses. This is just a very early prototype of the foot. This is 250 millimetres long from this end to this end, 100 millimetres wide at the widest point. And I'm hoping it'll be strong enough to carry the weight of a robot. Uh, I have stood on this and it carries my 90 kilo of weight so it should carry the robot without too much trouble. This was printed in PLA and at only 10% infill and as you can see it's fairly hollow inside. So the actual design structure is fairly strong. Hopefully uh, the hard part, the ankle, I haven't finished designing this ankle joint yet hopefully we'll still be able to retain that strength through the ankle joint. We will be using a pulley setup to control the toe and bringing the lines up through to put the motor up in the tibia for the toe and we will cover the reasons behind that in a future video as well. So just a, a small update. Uh, some of the delays in actually producing this has been learning a new CAD package. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I've now started with FreeCAD and I'll put a link in the description for that. The FreeCAD package is actually free software to download. It is open source, so we shouldn't have issues with licensing changes. And there are quite a number of add-on packages that go into it as well. It is a parametric design so that we can make changes as required. Things like making these holes a little bit larger. I may yet put straps on either side with bearings in to give it extra strength. At the moment it is possible to get a bit of twist in it and that would help eliminate that. But yeah, all of the weight is carried. If we put the robot up with the weight over the toe, all the weight is carried by these two lines. They're 200 pound fishing line, uh, each capable of carrying 90 kilo. Uh, and we've got two of them to give us a total of 180 kilo. So more than enough to carry our robot. That'll do for this video. If you enjoy these videos, Please click on like to receive notification when the next video comes out. Click on subscribe and ring that notification bell. These two things actually help the channel out a lot. If you wish to help support the channel further, there is Patreon. I'll put a link in the description for that. And don't forget to enjoy building your robots. And I'll see you in the next video.